right. So, Joe. Okay. Where have we got the Q&A? Right. So I'll, 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 read out, I'll read out the question. So it's from Udo, okay. Udo Klein. Recently, okay, excellent. Recently, Company X sent uh, their trade finance bank the bill of lading. The banker advised his customer that due to the fact that everyone is working from home, the documents cannot be processed. So it's something we actually talked about on the phone just a few days ago. Result, cargo cannot be transferred ownership. So the question is around uh, why aren't digital documents able to, to solve these problems right, right now? But Joe, I guess it'd be good to hear your, your view. Yeah, sure. And uh, and thank you very much for that, Deepesh. Um, and thanks very much to whoever asked the question. Um, I probably don't want to steal too much of Andrew's thunder when he will speak later on about technology um, and uh, and certainly about, about the fintech world. I'd say um, there's a couple of, of things to that question. Um, so... Uh, documents not being able to be processed because people are working from home, of course, is sort of, I mean, in a way, that's what exactly what business continue to measures at a bank are there for, to ensure that they can be processed. But, of course, if really the digital channels that we're talking about today and the, the test cases and use cases of new tech in trade finance um, would really already work the way that they were envisaged to work in future, then certainly this is something that, that would not cause an issue at all, but that could basically be done from anywhere and probably from a simple tool like a mobile phone, actually. And that, that is what I keep on saying. I'm, I'm dreaming of the day when I can do my trade applications of a mobile phone. And interesting, actually, and on, on, on that note, to see that particularly the, um, the large Chinese banks are quite ahead of the curve when it comes to that. So at least one of the large Chinese players is very plucked in, into various... Uh, domestic trade platforms where everything can be done on a, on a digital basis. Coming back, of course, to the problem in hand here, um, certainly in, in times like what we're experiencing now, um, there can be issues arising like this, um, and, and they really shouldn't, and particularly, of course, not when the shipment is missed. Um, we have certainly seen uh, incidences uh, in the, the recent, well, particularly when, when, when the first sort of like um, when the first wave of infections hit the market, um, certainly we have seen incidences in terms of courier services not um, working as reliable as usual because they simply didn't have the staff available. Um, it had ultimately no impact on, uh, on us uh, or on our clients because even if there was a slight backlog, it got, uh, it got picked up rather quickly as soon as activity was starting up again. Of course, here where shipment is being missed, that's, that's, a, that's a major issue. Um, and that's certainly one where I would say, on the one hand, a strong BCP plan by the financial institution will certainly help to, um, to mitigate these issues. And then on the other hand, of course, as we see technology evolving in future, uh, hopefully issues like that won't occur anymore. Um, but as I say, I, I don't want to be stealing Andre's thunder on that. I'm sure um, he's got some interesting uh, stuff to say about that from a fintech perspective. Um, we all know for sure uh, that trade finance is more than ripe for a digital revolution, uh, something that uh, that I've certainly worked passionately about, uh, working passionately about with, um, with my colleagues constantly and with clients, and that I know many, many other financial institutions are doing. So hopefully also in that regard, we are much better prepared for a crisis of this magnitude if it ever has to arise again. Um, I'd say on a positive note, though, to, to end on this question, we certainly are a lot more prepared nowadays um, as I was saying also just before, um, in terms of we have at least the capability to have a lot of people working from home, etc., which necess wasn't necessarily the case 10 years ago. Um, so uh, so that, that's a big plus and, and certainly something that will only just continue evolving. And certainly this is a big, big push towards evolving even better in that regard, like also this, this fabulous webinar today, to be fair. Thank you, Joey. Um, Olga Hewland has, has one other question which I'm going to ask you. With concerns over liquidity, have you noticed acceleration in receivables discounting? Uh, or in reverse, do you expect to see delays in honouring obligations under payables finance programmes? That's an interesting question, of course, um, because certainly uh, a lot of companies need to rush for liquidity at the moment um, because uh, there, is, there is, of course, high fixed costs that businesses have, and yet at the moment they can't really generate any revenue. And we know that, that by now many 
many, many sectors are affected by that and it's probably more day by day. So certainly there is, there's definitely a high demand for liquidity. Um, of course, we talk a lot to our other financial institutions partners as well. And I'd say um, there, is, there is an element, of course, of, um, of seeing um, a bigger demand for, for example, payables finance programs that are already in place and, um, and companies using these a lot more that might not necessarily have used it before. Um, but we haven't seen anything in, in the stage of, of there being um, delays in honoring obligations or so. So uh, we are definitely seeing higher demand and bigger drawdowns, um, but no issues uh, in terms of, of there being actual delays in terms of then, uh, in terms of then paying back obligations. Um, of course, like, like so many other financial institutions across the various countries as well, we work very closely with our client base to see particularly in the SME space who is starting to have issues. We're proactively calling companies to see whether there is like crash flow problems for businesses that are very well profitable in normal times that are just now hitting hard grounds because this is really such an unforeseen and unprecedented event that you really cannot plan in, in your normal course of business for. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a high demand for liquidity, um, but from a credit perspective, um, we're, we're, we're quite comfortable for the time being and we're proactively speaking with, with the businesses where we think maybe there might be an issue uh, as we go further down the line and depending on how long um, the situation continues. Great, thank you, Joe. So we're now going to uh, go on to a poll uh, specifically for this stream on the banking perspective. It's a very simple question. There are 313 attendees over here and, and 13 on, on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to see the question in front of you. As a corporate, are you currently looking to extend payment terms? Respectively, as a financial institution, have you experienced increased demand for supply chain finance and other working capital products? Obviously, this might not be applicable for some of the, uh, some of the people on this webinar. So now I'm going to end the poll and we will share, share the results. So perhaps we'll focus, focus here that, you know, the, the majority of of corporates and, and FIs have have indeed experienced increasing demand. Joe, do you have any comments on these results? Um, I'm just surprised by the high number of, uh, of people saying non-applicable, but that's certainly uh, due to uh, the many other professionals that, that we have on the call from, let's say, the insurance sector or from law firms or so. Um, yeah, as I say, I, I think, again, it's it's definitely, um, we're, we're seeing a high demand for liquidity at the moment. Um, it's also the sort of like the, plain, the planning for a rainy day, and now the rainy day is here, and that's exactly why, why I made the point before that. If you, of course, have facilities in place, like, for example, a, a supply chain finance program, that's, that's great because you have it there as a tool to use when, when there is a time when you need it. Thank you very much, Jay.